A farmer sprayed one liter of herbicide in between his legs. This is how his organs shut down. PT is a 43-year-old man presenting to the emergency room with chest pain and scrotal eczema. He tells the admitting nurse that he could feel his heartbeat in between his legs because sores and strange wounds started appearing there over the last several days. But all of that was because the medicine that he was applying to the area was working. PT was a farmer living in the country with his wife. One day, he had to sneak in his own house. It was four in the morning. He had too much to drink, but he told his wife that he was going out with the boys. As he creeped into his bedroom, he knew if he woke her up, he wouldn't wake up alive because he had been to a place and had an encounter that he shouldn't have had. PT's secret meeting that night came with what he believed was punishment from God. After the events of that evening, he thought he felt what was at first a dull burning sensation from under the shaft crawling up just below his belly button every time he needed to urinate. But as the time passed, he was convinced that there was discharge present there. He thought he could see it, he thought he could smell it, but at other times in the day, he just wasn't sure if something was really there or if this was all just in his mind. Sometimes he'd scratch and he couldn't stop scratching because the area would get itchier and itchier. One day, P.T. was in the field spraying herbicide to get rid of some weeds, and an idea popped into his head. Sometimes when he'd really dig in, he'd sometimes end up with chips of flaked off skin in his hands. If plant leaves slough off when herbicide is applied, a new foliage appears underneath. This is just like skin, so applying herbicide between his legs should strip away and exfoliate what's there, leaving layers underneath anew. He knew that for sure he had an infection in this area from his encounter that one night, so applying this should fix all of his problems, he thought. In the bathroom, PT took a small amount of herbicide and diluted it in water. He soaked a paper towel in it and started rubbing it all over the shaft, the scrotum, and the perineum. Because he couldn't see all the way in there, he took the tingling sensation he felt as confirmation that it was working. Some medicines you take two or three times a day, so he thought to apply this herbicide at the same frequency, taking 10 minutes per treatment. A few days into doing this, PT in the shower noticed something with his scrotal skin. It was painful, swollen, and starting to slough off. Clearly, his treatment was working. If two or three times a day was producing results, four times would be better. If 10 minutes works, then 20 minutes would clearly be optimal, as he started soaking his perineum in herbicide and putting a diaper on to increase contact time so that the chemical can do its magic. As the days pass, PT continues his treatment, but he starts to notice that his chest would feel tight. In between his legs felt tender. It even hurt to walk because the skin of his legs would rub together in that area, but that just means the herbicide is working. But finally, the hurt was too much. It was getting harder to breathe. This had been going on for at least seven days now. PT went to an urgent care in the town nearby. They told him to stop wiping his groin in herbicide and to stop putting a diaper over it. They didn't know which herbicide it was and they didn't ask. They concluded that it probably doesn't get through the skin, but they noticed some of the damage and injury that appeared there and washed and cleaned the area, telling him that things should be fine if he just stops applying the chemical there. But things weren't going to be fine. In the morning, PT woke up and felt like he was suffocating. The moment he got out of bed, the pain in his crotch was unbearable. His wife asked him what was wrong, but he didn't answer. He got into his car and drove himself to the emergency room, where we are now. At physical examination, the medical team found that PT's blood pressure and heart rate were normal. His breathing appeared to be labored. When they saw the wounds between his legs, they saw the area was swollen, eroded, with bloody scabs. Scrotal skin was bleeding and it was ulcerated, and parts of it appeared to be necrosed. They noticed on his legs a dark-colored liquid that appeared to have splashed or rubbed on, likely from the diaper that they had to peel off to examine the area. When asked what this was, he told the medical team what he had been doing over the last few days. When they asked him which herbicide it was, he showed them a picture of the bottle on his phone. Immediately, the medical team get a chemical test and obtain a sample of PT's urine. In the test tube, a deep blue color appeared, and this gives the medical team some clues as to what's happening. The herbicide that PT rubbed on his body is Paraquat, used in agriculture in the United States under restricted use due to the fact that its misuse can result in fatal toxicities. However, the mechanism whereby it exerts that toxicity is why it's so effective as an herbicide, and all of this derives from its chemical structure. 
Plants use sunlight to conduct photosynthesis to produce energy necessary for their survival. Water and light are used to transport an electron through a chain with the end result of energy and oxygen produced. Electrons are subatomic particles that are associated with energy, and their movements are responsible for electricity. But when paraquat is sprayed onto the plant, it has an extreme affinity for one electron to get sucked into its structure. Electrons are negatively charged, so when a chemical gains and incorporates that electron into its structure, its total charge reduces by one, so we'd say that paraquat gets reduced. Oxygen is abundant in plants, and it comes into contact with this reduced paraquat. They react. Oxygen takes the electron, reducing itself, before it goes on to cause permanent damage. Paraquat is then available to steal more electrons, cycling nonstop. This disruption of biochemical equilibrium is the primary driver of paraquat's herbicidal mechanism, but this exact same mechanism plays out the same way inside of humans. But PT never put paraquat inside his body. It was only ever on his skin. So what's happening here? When the medical team did the urine test, the deep blue color confirmed the presence of paraquat in the urine. This means that it isn't just inside his body, but that paraquat is floating around in his blood, so much so that his kidneys have started collecting and filtering it and excreting it in his urine. All of this meaning that PT's topical application of paraquat has resulted in systemic absorption. And because he soaked his perineum and his scrotum and the shaft in so much paraquat for so many days, the total amount in his body could be as if he drank it. The medical team take a blood test and find that PT's liver and his kidneys are shutting down. Thinking that there couldn't have been that much that absorbed through his skin, they elect to wash the area between his legs to give him some antibiotics just in case that those wounds are starting to get infected and to rehydrate him and push water into his body so that his kidneys can function again. But it wasn't enough. The following day, PT complains to the medical team that the pain between his legs is worse than it was the day before. Despite the area being cleaned and no more paraquat present, the bleeding on all of those parts was more severe than before. But even worse, he tells them that it feels like a rubber band is being tied around his chest because he's struggling to breathe. The medical team noticed that his abdomen is now swollen, and another blood test finds that PT is going into multi-organ failure, and there isn't enough oxygen in his blood. This brings us back to chemical structure. Paraquat is a bipuridal herbicide, bi meaning two and puridal referring to pyridine, a molecule that has high affinity for electrons. Another herbicide in this class is diquat, something that you can get off the shelf in home improvement stores in the United States. Do you remember that oxygen in plants that reacts with reduced paraquat? Well, that pathway tracks in humans too. The resulting superoxide radical is reactive. Nature tends towards stability. When something is reactive, another way to describe it is that it's unstable. And in order to stabilize itself, it needs to react with something. We know that matter is conserved, meaning that it's neither created nor destroyed. So if something is unstable, and to stabilize itself, it reacts with something else, then a transfer of matter occurs at this time. For a biological system, a change in structural integrity out of the ordinary because of the actions of a reactive compound means permanent damage happening. It means that normal function can't occur anymore. But humans have innate stores of chemicals that can prevent damage done by superoxide and the hydrogen peroxide that results from it. These protective mechanisms can have a high capacity to function, resulting in the hydrogen peroxide getting neutralized into water, which isn't toxic. But when paraquat is in the body, it doesn't stop cycling electrons, creating huge amounts of superoxide and exerting oxidative stress. Protective mechanisms quickly become overwhelmed. As the hours pass, PT starts to fall in and out of consciousness. Because his oxygen level in blood was low, the medical team gave him some supplemental oxygen through a mask, but his condition kept getting worse. All of this telling the medical team that the severity of PT's poisoning is as if he drank paraquat and it only takes a small sip of it to be fatal. Typically, when substances are applied dermally, they don't usually result in systemic toxicity. The skin has proteins and specialized structures to protect the body from external pathogens, but PT's situation is a little different. The scrotum is highly vascularized, meaning that there's a lot of blood vessels and a large blood supply flowing through the region. 
because it's slightly offset from the body in an effort to give gametes an environment to thrive that's cooler than body temperature, scrotal skin is thinner than the skin on the arms and the legs. Scrotal skin also has many folds and wrinkles in it, meaning that should the area not be properly dried before clothing is put on, liquid contact time can increase. But PT didn't just quickly rinse this area in paraquat, he immersed the shaft, the scrotum, and the perineum, applying a large amount, but then he didn't clean it off and put a diaper over it, dramatically increasing the contact time that paraquat had with his skin. In a small science experiment, the scrotum was found to absorb creams rubbed on it at a rate 42 times more than when those creams were applied to the forearm, meaning that compounds can potentially absorb more through this area than anywhere else. And Paraquat didn't just dry up and evaporate like water would, it stayed there until he applied it a second time, and a third time, and a fourth time, all in a single day, before he did it again the next. Paraquat absorbs through the skin, especially the kind that's known to absorb a lot of what's applied to it. But then the wound started appearing. The area was ulcerated with blood scabs, meaning that when he did this reapplication, it was applied over damaged skin, creating additional opportunity for Paraquat to leak into his body systemically. PT was placed on dialysis, where his blood was diverted to a machine so that it could be filtered and cleaned for him because his kidneys had completely shut down. The liver normally metabolizes and breaks down chemicals in the body, neutralizing them, but Paraquat doesn't get metabolized. The only way to get it out of his blood is through the kidneys, but getting it out of the blood doesn't get rid of what's already absorbed into his organs, as Paraquat reaches an equilibrium flowing back and forth between organs and the blood. The one place that it appears to be accumulating in PT's body is his lungs. You see, cells in the lungs are known to have a pump for a kind of chemical called a polyamine. Poly meaning many, and amine referring to a functional group involving nitrogen. These chemicals have many nitrogens, and they're involved in normal function in cells, and on lung cells, they purposely pump those chemicals where the nitrogens are separated by 0.6 to 0.7 nanometers. The problem is, paraquat is a chemical with two nitrogens separated by exactly that distance, meaning that in the lungs, paraquat is pumped in and heavily concentrated to the point where the amount in lung tissue is 50 times the amount in the blood. The lungs have no mechanism to pump this paraquat out, and as it enters cells, it cycles electrons endlessly, but the problem is made worse because of the function of the lungs. Do you remember that oxygen is involved in reacting with reduced paraquat? Well, the lungs are the first place in the human body where fresh oxygen is received from breathing in. If paraquat is ultra-concentrated in the lungs, and oxygen accepts the electrons stolen by paraquat going on to start a cascade of massive cellular damage, then it means that PT's trouble breathing that's been happening for days before he presented to the emergency room is actually his lung tissue dying, with permanent damage being done. The body detects this and sends the immune system in, causing inflammation and even more damage all at a time when paraquat stays concentrated in the lungs, continuing to cause damage, and it won't stop until PT stops breathing. When the medical team realized that PT had paraquat in his urine, they sent a sample of his blood to test for the amount of paraquat present. Days later, the result returned. Paraquat ingestions were recorded with meticulous detail over several years, and survival probability can be determined based on paraquat level in the blood and how many hours post-ingestion the patient is. PT's paraquat level was 0.5 micrograms per milliliter, but his hours after ingestion was unclear because he didn't drink it, but rather dermal absorption became systemic toxicity. And because he was symptomatic for at least a day before he presented to the emergency room, he is well beyond 24 hours. As the day passes, PT was struggling to breathe, but the medical team couldn't give him too much oxygen because it would worsen his condition quicker. Bipuridal herbicides don't have an antidote. There isn't any way to easily remove it from the blood, and there isn't any way to suck it out of his organs, and there isn't any way to regrow the parts of his lungs that have already died. At six days after he initially presented to the emergency room, the medical team noticed that PT had an erratic heart rhythm. It developed into a situation where his heart started shaking in place, not actually coming together to make a full contraction to move blood throughout the body. The medical team tried to do CPR to resuscitate him and to get his heart beating again, but they were not able to bring him back. 
at autopsy, widespread lung fibrosis was found in PT consistent with systemic paraquat poisoning. There's a wide range of herbicides out now. Some are not toxic in humans when ingested, but old houses, farms, agricultural areas in the United States will still use and have paraquat. Controls have been put in place to restrict its use, but around the world, this poisoning still happens, and often enough to be in the news a couple times a month. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourself and be well.